Welcome back, wine lovers. So we're going to continue our journey through Italy. Today we're heading all the way to the northeastern point um, to Friuli. It's one of my favorite regions. Um, it's kind of like the little ruffle on the top of Italy's garter if you're trying to get a picture of where we're drinking from today. Um, so Friuli has been a region um, for many, many millennia. Um, it was actually a major Mediterranean um, trading point for the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, so originally um, in the wine production there, there was a lot of Germanic influence. There was also a lot of Mediterranean influence. Um, however, Phylloxera completely wiped out this region and it really took a long time for them to come back. Um, so although Friuli itself is um, a very old established area, uh, the wine production is very modern. Um, it really didn't start picking up until the 70s, and to be honest, I think they're still trying to find their um, footing in the international market. Um, but we'll taste today and see if we can help them out. Um, so it is a white wine and a red wine producing um, area. The white wines are more famous, however, Merlot is the most planted grape in the area. Um, but what we kind of see over here uh, is more whites, and they are super tasty and super exciting. Um, pretty much the rule in this area is that there is not a lot of rules. Um, there's a bunch, there's I believe 11 DOCs, uh, 4 DOCGs, um, and quite a few IGTs as well. Uh, obviously the C's have been changed to P's, um, there's all kinds of legalities. For those of you that are studying, I've put all the information you might need on the article attached here. But for now, let's just focus on the wine, because that's the fun stuff. Um, so we're going to start here. Um, with Mola Mata. Um, this is from Marco Fluggio, which is one of the more well-known um, producers out of Friuli. Um, this particular wine comes from Colio, which is a region very near and dear to my heart. Um, I definitely had the benefit of pouring at a uh, table representing Colio at an EU tasting in Chicago um, last year. So I get to taste a whole bunch of tasty stuff um, that I still can't find in the US market. However, this guy you can, and I'm very happy to be trying it with you today. Uh, Mola Mata is probably one of the most important wines um, from Marco Fluggio. Uh, Roberto Fluggio is actually the winemaker. Um, this particular one is uh, 2009. Um, on the label it says Bianco. It is actually a blend of Pinot Bianco, 40% uh, to Friolino, Friolano, which is one of my favorites, 40%, um, and then 20% uh, Robola Gaia. Um, now, in the winemaking process here, it's exciting. Um, what they're doing is they're taking Pinot Bianco and aging it in um, new oak, and then aging the rest of the wine in complete uh, temperature controlled stainless steel, and then blending it together at the end to hopefully get a lot of layers. Um, we're kind of dealing with one grape that has a lot of acid, uh, one that has body, and one that's super floral. Um, so we'll see how that comes out in the wine. Already, this is a luminous. Um, we've got a really kind of day bright uh, yellow, complete yellow in the center to a, a watery rim. Um, there's, you can tell there was some skin contact here and um, definitely maybe some oak in the color as well. We're dealing with medium plus viscosity. Um, so this might have some body to it. Let's check the alcohol content. This is 13.5, so kind of, you know, put a smile on your face. Oh, now this, to me, is complete coleo in a glass. Um, We've got uh, lots of different layers here. Um, there's definitely a citrus element. We've got some zesty lime peel, maybe some kumquat. Um, there's tropical notes in here. I'm dealing with some green papaya, some banana leaf, some mango, and then white flowers all over the place. This smells like you're walking through a jasmine garden. This really is a lovely blend of those three grapes. And you do get some vanilla notes in here as well, which I do believe is the oak. And almost like a marshmallow, or like Lucky Charms marshmallows. This is a crazy exciting wine. Um, 
So what's happening here, I've got lots of acids, so this would be um, a great food wine. Um, however, because uh, the Robola is kind of a, a fatter grape, um, there's, there's texture as well. I'm getting this kind of silky um, butteriness in the center of my palate from the oak. Um, the Friulano is kind of giving it some floral, uh, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say sweetness because it's not sweet, um, but this really, really aromatic, just potpourri and, and white peaches. This is a tasty, tasty wine. Mm. Oh, I would love this with like a big, big runny piece of Robiola. Um, delicious, so. It was good two years ago, it's still good now. Um, Marco Flugia, I could not find it at a store in Texas, I did have to buy this one online. Um, but hopefully in a couple of years, Colio will be its own little area in your uh, local wine store. Alright, now we're moving to 100% Pinot Grigio from Borgo Moreto. Um, this is from the Grave region, um, I find it kind of interesting. Um, this region is called Grave because of its gravi gravelly soils. Um, so it's kind of a, a theme in naming wine regions. We can also think of Graves perhaps in Bordeaux with its gravelly soils. Um, this is from their mosaic line. It doesn't say mosaic on the bottle, but you're supposed to infer from the lovely mosaic around the name. Um, this one on its label does not say DOC, G, or DOC like the Colio did, it actually says DOP. So we're starting to see um, some EU influence on the labels here. This is a 2010 versus the 2009 that we just tried. Um, this was 100% stainless steel fermentation. Oh, this is a really lovely color. Um, I would guess, even though it didn't say it on the tag sheets, that there was some uh, skin contact here. Um, there's kind of a dusty, almost super light peachy yellow in the middle, so that's that kind of dusty uh, pinkish gray skin of Pinot Grigio. Um, going to a silvery rim here, so classic um, Pinot Grigio on the site. We've got medium, maybe even medium plus viscosity here, um, which is 12.5, so it actually um, has less alcohol than our Bianco blend. Mm. For those of you that say that Pinot Grigio is not exciting on the nose, this one changes, changes the uh, equation. This has um, kind of ripe um, yellow peach notes, some Meyer lemon in there. I'm getting a really yeasty quality too, so I would also guess there was some Lee's contact. There's really herbal notes in here too, I'm getting uh, some like cucumber. Some fresh cut grass, maybe some thyme. This makes me crave shrimp scampi like immediately. Um, this definitely, definitely has some healthy acid. Um, but it's not a one-note Pinot Grigio. Um, I'm definitely getting some kind of layered citrus in here. Uh, there's Meyer lemon. Um, there's kind of uh, that kumquat note again. Um, if any of you have ever had star fruit, definitely that kind of specific tartness. I'm getting a nice dollop of salinity here too. Um, so this would go really, really well. Um, with any kind of butter sauce, with garlic, um, again, shrimp scampi. Mm. Delicious. 
So we've definitely got two wins from Freely today. Um, I do hope that the article attached here um, is super, super informative for those of you who are interested. I also went ahead and listed some really exciting um, companies that do wine tours through this region. Um, I think this would be a really exciting region to visit because their winemaking techniques and their grapes are so diverse. Um, Sometimes there's only so many cabs you can have in a day, but if you could go on a flavor journey on a wine tour, well, why not? Um, that being said, Friuli the region, please, please get your wines out there. The world deserves to have them, and I want to be able to find them on more than just uh, really nice Italian restaurants in big cities. So, I hope this was fun for you. Keep watching. Next time we're going to Veneto, and salute.